Okay, so putting up a quarter wave vertical for 40 meters, many of us take it for granted that it's quite a simple thing to do. We get our 10 meter pole or our 12 meter fiberglass pole and we put this 10 and a bit meters of wire up it and it works great. But if you think back to when you were perhaps just getting into amateur radio, first being licensed, it wasn't just as simple as that. And I actually remember what that, that was like and how difficult that was. You know, you've got this big unwieldy pole, um, you need to guy it, you're worried about it perhaps falling into your neighbor's garden, breaking something in your own garden. So this video, I'm going to talk about something just a little bit different. So it's going to make it a lot less daunting. So if you're the new radio amateur or you're perhaps worried about a big long pole falling down in your garden, I'm going to talk about something that I think is almost as efficient as a quarter wave vertical, got all the same advantages um, and it's almost half the height. Let's go and take a look. So what do we usually do when we make a quarter wave for 40 meters? We have our mast, um, we have our wire which runs up it, and then we have a load of radials, because we're going to ground mount this, like so. Excuse the drawing. And the height of this oops, is approximately 10 metres give or take, usually going to be a bit more than that. And that, as I said, that can be quite unwieldy. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to, not quite half it, but almost. So instead of using a 10 or a 12 metre pole, what we're going to do is we're going to use a 6 metre pole. Like so. And then we're going to take our wire from here, and then we're going to go up like so. We're going to run it across, and then we're going to run it back down. Now, total length of this wire is still the same length as before, except we've actually linear loaded it. And I'll put our radials back in here again. So now we're down. down at 6 metres. Now I'm going to show you the setup that I use to actually do this and it probably looks more complicated than what it actually is but hopefully you'll actually have some bits and pieces round about you and uh, maybe in your garage, in your shed, you can actually do this because it's not a difficult antenna to make and the fact that we're going to use a 6 metre pole certainly makes it a lot more cost effective to do this. But before we do that I actually want to take you to the computer we're actually going to put uh, both antennas into MMANA and then we're going to do a comparison between the two and we're going to see what the modeling says. And I'm just going to load these files up. So first one I'm going to load is a 40 meter vertical. So let's, so this is basically 10 and a half meters of wire. Change the frequency, 7.1, 7.1 we'll say. Ground set up 32 radials I'm actually using because that's typically what I use. So it's on the ground, it's copper wire, let's just run that. Okay, so SWR 1.9. Looking at the far field plot, 5 degrees, and that is measuring minus 4.6. Okay, so I need to remember that. And what I'm going to do, cancel, I'm going to actually save the far field plot. So that's the 40 meter vertical, like so. Yes, I want to replace it. And the same thing I'm going to do now is, I'm going to open up, save that. I'm going to open up the linear loaded antenna. So you can have a look at the geometry. You can see we've went up six meters across a meter and then down three and a bit. So it's not fully linear loaded. And we're just going to do the same here again, 7.1. Um, real, can set up still 32 radials. Start that. And we get an SWR of 10.5. But uh, we know that MMA and A just, it doesn't like linear loading. And it can't quite calculate the SWR for that, but that's okay. So I'm going to look at the far field plots again. Now, 4.4 minus 4.4. 
Um, can we remember what the other antenna was? So we'll just save this. Yes, and we're just going to save the far field plots. Yes, now we need to compare. Set up. How do we do this again? Compare. So this antenna is the linear loaded, so we're going to load just the normal vertical antenna. So here we go, this is the one on the bottom. Now, this is actually interesting. If you look at basically the, radi the radiation pattern, you can see that there's effectively zero difference, certainly any measurable difference between the antennas. Look, at, look low down here, so your five degrees is off here somewhere. Um, there, there really isn't any difference to know in MMA and A, um, and to me that's, that's a positive, um, because that's going to allow us to actually drop the height um, of our uh, support, so our fiberglass pole. So, next thing we actually need to do is we actually need to get this thing out uh, and actually set it up. That was quite interesting, that modelling. Do I think that the linear load is going to perform that a little bit better than the full size? I don't know, the jury's still out. But the modelling's very good to you know, give you an idea how an antenna is going to perform. So I'm going to fast forward a week or two now and we're going to take a look at the antenna components. Now this is all the bits and pieces that we're going to use to build this antenna. I urge you to use your imagination and use what you have to hand. Um, but because I'm building antennas all the time, you know, I, 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 I like to use things modularly so I can use them for multiple antennas. So, we've got some tent stakes here. These are made from uh, rebar, we call it, or reinforced bar. These are galvanized, so we need three, three of those. We've got our three guy lines, and this is Mastrant P, I think it is, um, four millimeter. We've got three clam cleats, which we will use to basically make the pole straight and tension the guy wires up. We've got our six meter pole. This is the Life Sabreeze Pro Pole, and uh, coming down, I call this the uh, top plate or top clamping plate. So this is going to go on top of the antenna. Um, so the black one is where it's going to go onto the mast and the two green ones is what we're going to use for the fiberglass poles, which we're going to show you now. So we've got three fiberglass poles, two are going to be used at the top and one is going to be used at the bottom. And then we've got our feed point here. Now this looks complicated, but trust me, it isn't. So if you actually look inside this, you can see that it just has a connection uh, from the shield of the coax to the ground and from the center of the coax to this port here. This is our antenna wire that we're going to use. This is 0.75 millimeter, uh, just tri-rated electrical wire. I've got 11 meters here. Now we're going to need to trim a good bit off that. Here is a guy plate. Uh, that we have. Uh, this is going to basically use to attach our radials to, which we have here. And the only thing that I don't actually have here is a little bit of wire, which actually goes from the uh, feed point to the guide plate. So, time to go and get it set up. So about half an hour later, we've got the antenna and it's, it's completely set up. I just need to run a, a longer piece of coax back to the shack. So, what have we actually done here? I guess we'll work from the ground up. So we've got our radio plate on the bottom there, and the radio plate is connected to the feed point there. And um, obviously we've got our radials that's coming off the base plate. Now the amount of radials here is equivalent to 20 radials. So there's these are bunches of six, um, and they are four meters long each. And I've just got these strewn about. Not 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 exact, just thrown about. We could see our antenna wire on the side, which goes up, and there's just a ring terminal on the end of that. So this is our Life's a Breeze 6 metre pro pole, and we're going to go all the way up there. So it goes all the way up to the top, it goes along its one metre, and then it comes back down again. And this is where it actually finishes. And we can see that I've just got masking tape bringing it down towards the third arm. Now if I was going to set this up for a longer period of time I'd actually use a piece of string and I've actually got a knot here which I could tie off to and because I'm using these these um, key rings, keychain rings, um, that knot will actually go through that. And then next thing we need to do is actually go and look at the SWR and uh, the other parameters. Now what I need to point out here is 
I've actually calibrated uh, the Rig Expert and you need to do that if you're using or you should do that um, if you take any true SWR measurements because your coax will have an effect so I have calibrated this along at the other end so I've put an, an open, a short, a load and so my measurements been taken from the feed point not taking into account the, the coax so I'll just run a fresh SWR sweep here and you can see the calibration active in the bottom left hand corner now this is absolutely beautiful we're the lowest SWR 1.25 and you can see that we're um, we're below 1.5 on the lower end and we are um, just touching 1.5 on the higher end so that's obviously the UK but even in the US you guys would be able to use this no problem now I just actually want to go and look at the the all parameters which I think that's interesting to look at the resistance and the reactance so there we go so if you look in the bottom left hand corner you can see that we've got a resistance of round about 41 ohms and a reactance of plus 5 uh, ohms and that really is nothing um, so because where an antenna really is resonant is where the reactance is zero and if you look at where that reactance point is it's showing up as 7.036 uh, uh, and I think our lowest SWR is like 7. Point, um, what was it, 125? Um, so yeah, the great thing about this antenna, absolutely no matching required um, and <laughs> when we actually connect coax up to this, the SWRs are going to probably look a little bit um, better again but this is the true SWR, uh, what you're seeing here. Now that we've got the antenna set up, let's have a listen to some QSOs that I've actually made with this antenna in the past. I've used this antenna quite extensively and I've made some fantastic contacts. Mike, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray. Mike, Mike, zero, X-ray, you're 5-5, then any zone ahead, go ahead. Yeah, ITU's on 27, 27, 5-9. 40, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, Victor, listen. Mexico, Mexico, zero, Ocean, Papa, X-ray, QRP. <laughs> Mike, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray, QRP. Mike, Mike, zero, QRP station, go ahead. Yeah, QSL, it's Mike, Mike, zero, Ocean, Papa, X-ray, Oscar, Papa, X-ray. The name is Colin, Charlie, Oscar, Lima, Italy, November. Colin is the name and only running 10 watts, 10 watts from the IC705. Back to you, Foxtrot 4, Fox Japan Hotel, Mike, Mike, zero, Oscar, Papa, X-ray. Mike, Mike, Zero, Oscar, Papa, X-Ray, QRP. Again? Yeah, Mexico, Mexico, Zero, Ocean, Papa, X-Ray, QRP. Mike, Mike, Zero, Oscar, Papa, X-Ray, QRP. Good evening, thanks for call. Five, seven, fifty-seven. My name is Ludo, Lima, Uniform, Delta, Oscar, over. Mike, Zero, Oscar, Papa, X-Ray. Uh, very good evening, my friend. Thank you very much for responding to my call. You are five by nine, fifty-nine, QSL. There we are. Let me know what you thought of that. Let me know if you think this is an antenna that you that you want to try. If you followed me from the beginning, you'll have seen this antenna before in the way of adjust the wave. But this antenna does not need to be complicated. Um, how I've done it, it takes a little bit of a while to put all the parts together, but it doesn't need to be like that. And um, for the feed point, you could use something as simple as a banana plug. You could use some bamboo or even these fiberglass poles. These are actually tent poles and they're about £1, pound, £1.50 pound each, $2, something like that for these poles. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on this antenna to get it going. The fiberglass pole that I'm using, that's no longer made. That's the Life of the Breeze Pro Pole. I find that a real shame why they're not actually making those anymore. I believe it's maybe to do with somebody retiring within the business. But there's lots of other options out there. You could even get a cheap 10 metre pole um, and remove some sections. There's no shortage of poles in the market to do this and really I th the big advantage of this antenna is its height and um, being able to just guy at the bottom, put it up. Now I've had this antenna up through winter storms here uh, in the UK 
Um, not quite hurricane force, but getting up for 80, 90 mile an hour winds and it handles it no problem at all, just being guided at the bottom. Looking at the match, as you've seen, you don't need any matching. It, you can hook it right up to your coax and you could see that that um, resistance was about 40 ohms, the reactance about 5 ohms. So we've got a really good match as it is. So why don't you try a monoband antenna for once? I think a lot of us are hung up about the convenience of getting multiple bands. But if you're just wanting something up in a very small space for 40 meters, this is perhaps the antenna for you. It would be great for you to have it a go and then let me know how you get on with it. That's us folks. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.